It's your boy T Money with another live live reaction, and today we react into the deserved downfall of Diddy and a deep dive into his alleged crimes. So all these is allegations, YouTube. I'm gonna start off by saying all these are allegations, alleged allegations that you know, as far as Diddy's crimes. But we gonna get deep dive into it. It looks like we might be witnessing the ultimate downfall of Sean Diddy Combs. The Sean John Combs was born in Harlem, New York City on November 4, 1969. His mother, Janice Combs, was a model and a teacher's assistant, while his father, Melvin Earl Combs, served in the U.S. Air Force and had connections with Frank Lucas the infamous New York drug kingpin whose life inspired the 2007 Denzel Washington drama, American Gangster. In Damn. 1972, Melvin was fatally shot at the age of 33 while sitting in his car on Central Park West, and it was later speculated that he was killed for being a police informant. Diddy graduated from Mount St. Michael Academy, where he played football and saw his team clinch a division title in 1986. Should I ain't no Diddy's play football. Oh no, they find out brother love was out there on the field. You feel me? You all say he was out there in the field. Yeah, now he out here in the streets. Nah, nah, for real, for real. Now he out here in court for real. But yeah, you know what I mean? You already know. There's been a lot of allegations popping up in the last, you know, couple. I mean, I feel like it was all stuff people knew already, but then spoke on and now then now they speaking on stuff for real. He's speaking on stuff. Let's get into it. This right here, I think this is the guy, one of the dudes that sit there been spilling all the beans on Diddy, Diddy's ex. Uh, he's his ex security right here. You know what I'm saying? I think he this man's uh allegedly. <laughs> I think Diddy might owe him a bag or something because he been dropping everything on him. Everything he got on him is his ass. He been Following dropping. this tragedy, multiple wrongful death and personal injury lawsuits were filed, and yet no criminal charges were brought against Diddy or other organizers. This incident was allegedly one of the reasons why Andre Harrell fired Diddy from Uptown Records. But Diddy already had a plan. In 1993, he founded Bad Boy Entertainment, forming a partnership with Arista Records and bringing along Christopher Wallace, aka right Notorious B.I.G. or how it all started, you know what I mean? Like, he was throwing them parties in, in uh, Howard, you know what I mean? He used to be throwing parties in Howard, uh, you know, a lot of people done, you know, he would pack them, he would pack them shows out. Like, I'm talking about he would pack them shows out and it'd be more people, like 3,000 more people trying to kick the door to get in. Like, this is really how he got put on. E. Smalls. Diddy and Biggie initially connected in 92 after Diddy expressed interest in meeting Biggie following a feature about him in the Source magazine. During this time, Biggie formed a friendship with West Coast rising star Tupac Shakur, and according to Biggie's associates, Biggie and This was before the East Coast West Coast beef. You know, I remember, you know what I mean? They Biggie and Pac, they would they would they were locked in, you know what I mean? I mean, I, and, and, and stuff went left, you feel me? were attending a Soul Train Awards after party organized by Vibe magazine at Peterson Automotive Museum in LA. The party was eventually shut down due to So, and this, uh, so, let's, let's rewind it, right? So why Diddy would send his artist Biggie to LA to for like you know uh i think he wanted to record or something when he got um and had a parties going on out there when you got multiple multiple studios in new york it don't make no sense it don't make no sense you know what i mean and just right after you know pot got hit so you know and then you know they you know east coast the west coast they had you know a big feud you know it was the mid 90s 
to overcrowding, and Biggie left with his group in two Chevy Suburbans. Heading back to his hotel, he sat in the front passenger seat with two companions while another individual drove. Diddy traveled in the other vehicle accompanied by two bodyguards, while Bad Boy's security director trailed behind in a Chevy Blazer. As Biggie's SUV paused at a red light roughly 50 yards from the Peterson Automotive Museum, a black Chevy Impala pulled up beside it. The driver of the Impala lowered the window, brandished a gun, and shot at Biggie's car. Struck four times, Biggie was rushed by his entourage to Cedar sinai Medical Center. Completely not true. Biggie didn't have no money conflicts with anybody. And as far as my theory, it would be inadequate for me to speculate. I would just be like everybody else to speculate on who did this or why it was done. I mean, one thing I do know is that it was evil. While it was widely believed that Suge Knight, CEO of Death Row Records, orchestrated Biggie's murder in retaliation for Tupac's death, a lot of people have speculated that Diddy might have had prior knowledge of the plan and allowed it to happen. An article published by Rolling Stone in December 2005 claimed that Diddy refused to cooperate with the investigation and encouraged bad boy employees to do the same. The article also quoted Valletta Wallace, Biggie's mother, who expressed her distrust in the police and seemingly accused corrupt LAPD officers of hiding evidence related to her son's murder. But Valletta didn't just doubt the police. She also allegedly warned Biggie about Diddy, writing in her memoir, I believe Sean loved my son after he was dead. I used to tell Christopher all the time not to trust Sean. What's also worth pointing out is that Biggie reportedly had no plans to be in LA the night he was murdered, and everyone knew traveling to LA was was risky given that Tupac was killed just six months earlier. According to mm, that was one one uh one of the incidents right there. We just, let's, let's scroll through this. And his friend, rapper Shine, who was signed to Bad Boy. According to a report by Paper Magazine, around 2.20 a.m. Simply Dilly Dilly Yo. Him. Diddy accidentally knocked a drink out of someone's hand and a man mockingly threw a stack of money in Diddy's face. The man was allegedly Brooklyn ex-con Matthew Allen, better known by his street name, Scar. An argument broke out, quickly escalating into a full-blown shootout and, according to multiple witnesses, some of the rounds came from Diddy's gun. Three people were injured and one woman was shot in the face. Amid the chaos, Diddy and J-Lo escaped in his 99 Lincoln Navigator, but were pulled over by the police after running a red light. The police found a stolen 9mm handgun in the trunk of the car, and both Diddy and Jennifer were arrested. J-Lo spent 14 hours in a cell, and this was reportedly the final straw for her. She dumped Diddy on Valentine's Day 2001 and never looked back. As for Diddy, he was charged... That's crazy, you know what I'm saying? Because you see, you know, you keep having to change your names. You go from Puff Daddy to P. Diddy to Brother Love. And and, and and you got, you know, you're doing some wild stuff out here. You know what I mean? You got uh, allegedly, you know, you know, there's a shootout at, you know, at the at the club. You got J-Lo getting locked up. And like, come on now. See, let's let, let's hop into it, man. And you left Shine out there. For real, for real. You really did leave Shine out there. Shine do. Shine later converted to Orthodox Judaism, and this led to an urban legend about Diddy being the devil incarnate because multiple bad boy artists turned to God after dealing with Diddy. Shine embraced Judaism, Mace became a pastor, and Loon became a devout Muslim. Anyway, the 1999 shooting was what led Diddy to change his stage name from Puff Daddy to P. Diddy in an attempt to distance himself from his criminal past. He would go on to change his name and rebrand his image multiple times following different everybody after they mess with diddy you know what i'm saying now they gotta they searching for god you know they 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 you know they try to cleanse their soul public controversies. Back in 2017, he changed his middle name to Love, shortly before his ex-girlfriend Kim Porter died under mysterious circumstances. I decided to change my name again. I just I'm just not who So this is this is the crate like this is all we just we're a little bit into it. So, so allegedly you got something to do with Pox 
getting hit. You had allegedly have someone big getting hit. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly something to do with uh your ex wife, Kim Porter. You know what I mean? You done had through parties where people got trampled on. You know what I mean? And and you just you just missing like up until now you've been missing like Brother Love been navigating through all these, you know what I'm saying, hitting the matrix, not getting hit with nothing really. And then they 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 they, they done put the belt to ass now. I am before. I'm something different. So my new name is Love, a.k.a. Brother Love. I will not be answering the Puffy, Diddy, Puff Daddy, or any of my other monikers, but Love or Brother Love, okay? Almost exactly a year after Diddy announced he was changing his name to Love, Kim Porter, the mother of three of his seven children, died suddenly at age 47. According to the official ruling, Kim died of complications of pneumonia. However, many people expressed doubt about this, with some even suggesting that Diddy had Kim killed because she was allegedly writing a tell-all book about him. One of these people is an industry insider and Jay-Z's former background singer Jaguar Wright who claimed that Kim's initial autopsy showed traces of some kind of poison. Kim died from pneumonia. So Jaguar, why she best shows, this is, uh, this is Jay-Z's, um, old, uh, backup, uh, singer. So, you know what I mean? Like, she been going on a, a, a campaign to, you know what I'm saying, put Jay-Z out there, been going on a campaign to put Diddy out there, Brother Love. All of them, everybody in the industry, little dirt, dirty, dirty, dark secrets. She shine a light on all that. But there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide, and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know that they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. Mm. Jaguar also suggested that multiple people who dealt with Diddy were planning to release tell-all books and documentaries before they either got sick or died under suspicious circumstances. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a cult. And then when. So that's four. With all the other stuff allegations he's had. That's four. Uh, weird coincidences. Of people telling tell all books. That might have information on. Uh, Brother Love. That uh, mysteriously. End up getting really sick. And dying. And or dying. Cassie filed her lawsuit against Diddy on November 16th, just one day after the fifth anniversary of Kim Porter's death. Jaguar publicly offered her support to Cassie and claimed that Kim warned Cassie about Diddy before she died. I will advocate for you because, see, I know something that a lot of people don't know. I know that you and Kim Porter had a sit down right before she left us. And I know Kim had some very good advice to give you. And I believe that, that this is why things are happening as they're happening now. Kim was smart, wasn't she, Cassie? Kept you alive and kept you safe. Another individual who publicly claimed that Kim didn't die of pneumonia was her ex-husband, Al B. Sure who mysteriously fell into a coma just months after he shared a post referring to Kim's death as murder. In July 2020, Al shared a since-deleted video of himself crying and wrote, I just found this footage from the morning I learned of Kim Porter's murder and how it ripped the soul from my physical body. I do know any more victims who will soon come forward against Diddy. In a since-deleted Instagram post, so 50 Cent wrote, he paid everywhere. that money real quick, should have done yeah. that before the Quickness. sharks saw the blood in the water, and here they come in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, every woman he put his hand on. Now, as far as we know, there is no active criminal investigation against Diddy at this moment. However, fans on the internet are saying it's only a matter of time and this could likely be the beginning of Diddy's deserved downfall. One fan wrote, Going against someone as powerful as Diddy was no easy f I know Cassie got, uh, you know, paid out. You know what I mean? I, allegedly, I know she got the bags. They came, they came back 
within 24 hours of get uh, of a uh, allegation to getting the bag and they don't know what happened no more you know what i mean i'm sure it's a cease and desist orders for them not to speak on certain things you know and this is all allegedly you know what I'm saying allegations but there you have it your boy t money with another live reaction uh leave in the chat if you think your boy puff daddy p diddy or brother love is gonna be able to make his way out of these situations you know what i mean um and back to making you know what I'm saying music um you know just let me know what, what what your thoughts of this is you know what i mean it's your boy t money makes bucks with another live reaction you already know hit the bell to be stay notified on everything being dropped you know what i'm saying sub if you're new to the channel and i'm out one